Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it broke and I didn't do anything with it. It got from my, my friend. Okay, yeah, yeah, do you I mind them? Yeah, I remember. I, remember. I, I haven't even used it. I have not even used it. Let me, let me, let me call. Okay. So it's here, you got it. Yeah. Um, well, I'm Yania. I'm from London, but originally was born and raised in Germany. Um, and then when I was 18, I moved to Australia, lived there for eight years, um, studied graphic design and visual arts there, so that's where I did my creative uh, career path. Um, and then moved to London four years ago. And now I'm here in Ghana for one month. Um, I've been here two years ago already, before the pandemic started. Um, and I absolutely loved it, and so I knew I'm going to come back at some point, and this time just worked out because I just um, resigned from my full-time job. I'm now a freelancer, I'm running my own business, which is exciting, so I can travel and work remotely. So, yeah. Um, yeah, because I've always moved around, like I lived in, uh, first I was in Germany, where I grew up, and was raised, and my family is still there. And then I lived in Brisbane and Australia first for three years, and then I moved to Sydney, and then now London. And in between, I've travelled to quite a few places. Um, I always find myself whenever, wherever I live, I just that's my home, and I just feel at home there. Um, and my personality, not personality, but like you always change a little bit where, where you live. You, you adapt a little bit, your fashion changes, your humour changes a little bit. So if you go like through my photo albums, like every time I move. And I just change a complete personality. <laughs> Look, it's so funny. Um, but growing up, I always felt a little bit like I wasn't quite like fitting in into the culture I was born in. Like I grew up in like a really small hometown, uh, sorry, a small town um, called Nuremberg, um, and it's really pretty and really beautiful to like visit for like. <laughs> it, it's quite famous actually for like Hitler. Okay. Yeah. So Hitler used to have his like speeches there and his like troops and stuff like that. But it's also famous for Christmas market. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's really cute, like very quaint, and it's nice to go home for a visit. But like growing up, I always just felt a little bit like oh, I wanted to go into a bigger city. I want I want to speak English. I want to go out into the world and discover bigger places. I, I didn't really know what it looks like, and I really wanted to move to Australia. Um, because I love, I always loved nature, I always loved the beach and the ocean and the warmth um, and so I just felt very at home when I was in Australia um, but then now in London I also feel very at home in London but it's completely different to Australia um, very very creative, very international and diverse but then it doesn't have the ocean so <laughs> it, both places are very different but I just find myself at home wherever I go really um, and can Mm -hmm. Carry your home within yourself. Yeah, and the whole world is my home sometimes. I just feel like that. Yeah. Well, I've got uh, quite a few friends here, and they're all in the creative industry like photographers and creative directors and artists as well. Um, and a few of my friends who are from London are here currently as well, working remotely. So it felt quite like an easy place to just do the same thing as well. And uh, because I've been here before, I knew. I knew my way, I know my way around in Accra as well already, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Especially like in December now, I've so many people from London are coming here. Um, in Ghana, it's like attracting more and more people from, I want to say UK and America. Yeah. It's so funny, you literally like, like speak from my like soul or whatever because um, in growing up in like a small hometown it isn't a very creative place and even I was just talking to someone yesterday about this, even the school system that I was like growing up in didn't give me a clear path of hey if you want to be creative in your career later on this is a path you take or you can do graphic design or creative direction or fashion style and stuff. Because there actually are so many ways these days, but back then I didn't know about that. Um, so I was a little bit lost the first five years after high school, because I wasn't quite sure what to do, and I didn't quite, yeah, I didn't fit in because everyone wanted to be a doctor or a nurse or engineering, and I'm like, I don't want to do any of that. I want to be. I didn't even know what. I couldn't even define it because it, there wasn't anything. Um, and so when I moved to Australia, I did actually 
one year off first and it was like a music art and dance school. Um, it was like a school for creatives and they had a, um, I actually did the music stream back then because I played guitar and used to sing and write songs and stuff like that and I used to think that that would be my path but I wasn't actually that good and I just, yeah, I wasn't good enough to actually have a career in it so that's why I was a bit lost because like, I know I'm creative but... It wasn't the right thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they, the school also had like an art studio downstairs where people can paint and just craft and like put like installations together and just use it as like a time to like just explore their creative um, elements and then I just sometimes went in there to do songwriting and it ended up painting and then I realized oh my god I love painting that's so cool and then I did like collages and then um, somehow I downloaded Photoshop and put the collages into Photoshop and made prints out of them I started selling the prints and I was like, oh my god, I love graphic design, did like an internship with graphic design and then slowly I realised I love graphic design, I want to study this and that I want that to be my career but it took me like a long time to even get to that place like I had a long journey to even get to that um, but now I am full-time a graphic designer and I'm now a creative director as well because I've been working as a graphic designer for 10 years now um, and this year it felt like it was time to become self-employed because I always wanted to do my own thing um, and now I've got the expertise to actually be able to do that so yeah so it was like a, a long journey to get there I don't wish it on many people I wish it, it was just easier where you can just like in high school you're like okay I want to be an artist which way do I go or I want to be an actor which way do I go yeah And I feel like Ghana is, well, what I've seen, I feel like it's expanding, expanding more as, as like this creative hub and, and it's becoming more independent as well and finding its own creativity and like its own flair, um, which I think is really cool. It's really creative, really unique and it's not trying to be any other country, any other place, not trying to copy any other city. It's, it's got its own like style and texture, which I think is really cool. Uh, so many friends. Yeah. There's one particular um, person, which is like my favourite story to tell, um, that happened like two years ago um, when I came to Ghana and I was actually at Makola Market. It was the day for Christmas and I really needed um, an outfit for Christmas. And in London, all my Ghanaian friends were like, oh, when you go to Makola Market, just ask for a dressmaker, um, buy fabric and they make your dress. And it's super easy. Which it really wasn't. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I think it's so about. Um, so I was like walking around my corner markets and kept asking for a dressmaker, a tailor, blah blah blah. And they, they all said, oh they're off today, they're off today because it's Christmas. And I was like, oh I, I need a dress for tomorrow. Um, and then at some point I'm, I, I went to the, is it called China Mall? Like the yeah, area where there's all the... the China area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I went to the very back and I asked someone for a dressmaker. He said, oh, I've got a dressmaker, but she's out in the dentist. I can't, let me give her a call. And she gave her a call and I was like, hey, this is a lady here. She needs a dress. Could you come see her? And then she said, yeah, um, tell her to meet me at KFC at Denta at 2 p.m. And I was like, okay. <laughs> it was like my first day in, in Ghana. Right? I didn't even know where Adenta is. Didn't know that. But it's like, for context, it's like 30, 40 minutes out. Um, and yeah, and then grabbed an Uber, went to KFC Adenta and was just sitting there waiting, waiting, for, for, a waiting for a stranger. <laughs> and I was like, what am I doing here? Um, just any guy could just come and pick me up and say, it's that, me. yeah, it's me, or I'm bringing you to her, or whatever. Um, but yeah, Rukaya came um, and she was playing African music, like Afrobeats, and she had like beautiful like hair and big earrings and big like dresses and stuff like that um, and she was so friendly and beautiful um, and we immediately like we immediately clicked and became really good friends um, and she made a bunch of dresses for me which are all actually here oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we developed a really beautiful friendship over those two weeks I came to see her like a few times um, and I would like sketch up like outfits and she would like make them and we stayed in touch and I was still friends and I literally saw her like just the other day, just kind of making an outfit for me again. <laughs> um, yeah. It's like personal to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it literally is. Um, and it's just really beautiful, yeah.
Um, I think it would be this. Maybe. Can I pick it up? Brother Boogie, right? A couple of them. Yeah. So she made this two years ago. Oh, it's just like a cup and it's top. Yeah. And it's like an off-shoulder top and yeah. it has like like little pockets and then... Like, it's just the top she made? Yeah. Didn't come with a skirt? Yeah, didn't come with a skirt. So you could be our, our, our women here mm -hmm. on Sunday, if you ask people to wear their Sunday best. Yeah. That's the kind of top. Um, or one of the thousands of kinds of tops. Yeah. But they always kind of like fitted and tailored to the waist. And then the skirt is a it's like, like a the mermaid. Yeah, and yeah. Then, like it has a mermaid tail. Yeah, I've got the, yeah, this one is mermaid. And um, that's like our classic Sunday wear um, outfit that we really need to. Uh, yeah, that one. So I've yeah. got here the ma like a matching crop top and the mermaid cut. So that's the first one she ever made for me. That was okay, my no, Christmas outfit. Right, that was yeah, Christmas. That was Christmas. 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 Yeah. <laughs>
Um, that was beautiful. I was supposed to go with a friend, but she wasn't able to come in the end, so I went on my own. And I wasn't quite sure if I should go on my own. It was like, oh, countryside, all by myself. I've never been there. Um, it was super safe, it was super easy, and um, it was stunning. I was by Volta region, so right by the Volta lake, and there was like a strip of sand, and then there was the ocean. So okay, I had the lake. Okay, okay. So I swam through the lake, Maranata? and then it was um, Kenta. Keta. Keta. Oh, Keta. Yeah. So I had the lake and the ocean. Keta. So I would swim through the lake, walk over Keta. the sandbank, and then go to the ocean. <laughs> it was beautiful. It was really nice, and That's the food nice. was amazing as well. And it was so peaceful and quiet, and people were so. The thing is, it's funny with Aqua. People are really friendly, but they're not as friendly as outside of Aqua. In Accra, it's different suddenly. Yeah. So everyone's super friendly there, um, super welcoming. It was really nice and peaceful. Yeah. Oh. And I love red red. Uh, of course, chill of rice and plantain. Um, love plantain. Um, tilapia. I had tilapia in Banku, but then also I had tilapia in something else next to it and I can't figure out what it is and no one knows what it is. What but it looked it? like shredded cabbage. Coleslaw probably. Yeah, but it, it didn't have it any cold. sauce, it was just dry. It yeah. was like a salad. <laughs> no, but it was really good. It um, had like nuts in it and stuff like that. But I don't know what it is. It's not a local meal then. It was, it was. It had like a name. I don't, <laughs> don't know what it is. <laughs> But yeah, I'll go for it and I'll show you later. Okay, okay. I'm vegetarian. Vegetarian. Yeah, but I do eat fish sometimes, so. That's fine. I'm a flex, yeah. yeah Flexitarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flexible vegetarian. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've done, jo actually, I've cooked jollof rice before. Um, just once in my kitchen <laughs> for my birthday party um, and plantain but I'm not sure if you can cut that as cooking just frying some <laughs> people always say please before every sentence like like please where are you going and please <laughs> we do like to say please <laughs> Even my driver the other day, I, I asked, can you pick me up at 3 p.m.? And he said, yes, please. I'm like, I, no, I'm, you're doing me a favor. <laughs> I think um, the English left us in some proper manners. <laughs> we just carried on with them for a while. Yeah, um, yeah and um, things are yeah, quite slow here. I think you have to be quite, like, just adapt to the culture. Things are, you just have to be paid, like, as a traveller, I think you just have to be patient with things, like, especially, like, um, like if you go to a restaurant and order food, don't go when you're really hungry, like, wait a little, like, go before you get hungry, <laughs> just, yeah, and then okay. you feel a bit more comfortable when the food comes out late. <laughs> because some restaurants are really quick here, but then others aren't, yeah. um, and it just, yeah, I got used to it now, it doesn't even bother me anymore, but, um, yeah, <laughs> things are just a bit slower here. Yeah. Yeah. That's true, that's certainly true. <laughs> um. uh, well, if you say your music, you mean Afrobeats? I don't know now. I just or do you mean like a name? Are we Kenyan like or Afrobeats? <laughs> it's, <laughs> like, it's a weird question to be honest, because we do have Afrobeats. A lot of it comes from Nigeria though, which is probably the best. Yeah, thing. that's what I was just thinking. And so I wouldn't even like... Yeah, yeah, because Burner Boy is Nigeria, like Fire Boy at the end is from Nigeria, yeah. Whiskey is also Nigeria. Yeah. So like your favorite is basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you see so the concert you did? Um, I watched the concert last night. You watched it? <laughs> yeah, and Burner Boy showed up. Also? Yeah. So you have got Tam, he Burner had, Boy, um, Coffee. He had so many people, just, he did like a song on his own and then he was like, I told you I'm going to ha have friends with you and then just someone will come out and you're like, no, really? And then he does another song by himself and then Tony Bernabé comes out and I was like, what? All these extra acts here. <laughs> but I can't believe that they just came for one song. Like, that's quite a big favour. I think he's pretty big. But, uh, I think he's pretty big. Because Bernabé is like... He's big, yeah. Yeah, because I saw Bernabé two years ago at Afro Nation and it was amazing. That's and, okay. Hmm? Concept. Affirmation. That's in the UK, they have that. Or no, in, here in Ghana. What the hell? I missed that? 
Two years ago. Affination? Yeah. How do I not know? I've mixed it with a bunch of things. There's so, so many things. Two years ago, it was Affination, Afrochella. Yeah. A week bef- no, a week after Christmas. But there was Detiri as well. And Bernaboy was performing. Yeah, and he was like the main, he was the yeah. main lineup. But so, yeah, speaking of Ghanaian culture, well, he's Ontarian, but so he was supposed to perform at 11 p.m. And he performed at 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> But that's what I mean, like you just have to, like, you just Wait. go with it. <laughs> I was like, it's gonna come out, it's gonna be worth it, and it was worth it. It really was, he was amazing. <laughs> and the vibe was amazing, the crowd was amazing, everyone was dancing and just dancing with one another, like, it was so beautiful. Yeah. I think we have a, a, a new uh, routine for the country. <laughs> adopted daughter of Ghana. <laughs> yeah, the Avatar's Ghana. Okay, so I watched um, a movie two nights ago, um, and it was Red Notice on Netflix. It's with The Rock and with Ryan Reynolds and the girl from Wonder Woman. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's like similar to I don't think it's it's not a Marvel movie, but it's like similar to Marvel, like an action like. What's it called? Red Notice. Red Notice. Okay. Yeah, and it's really funny. <laughs> it was really funny. Um, but usually my genre or like movies where I like to watch like thrillers and action and like um, fantasy. So a lot of the rings is my favorite movie. I love Gladiator. I love the Joker. Um, they all quite different, aren't yeah. they? But like they are have like the action in it. Yeah. Well, my dressmaker, so Rikaya, she always has to be running in the background and. I don't know what it's called, but there's this one like lady and like the one actress in it, and I see her on every TV here, and she must be really famous, but I don't know what her name is. But I now reckon, I now recognize her, and I'm like, she, she was like, in the movie. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so last time I came, I stayed in the airport residential area, which is quite nice, very very different. Um, this time I want to be a bit more at the centre, a bit more in the hub where everything's happening and really close to everything. Um, also it's perfect because it is literally in the middle and you can get anywhere in like 10 minutes. Um, I like also, it's quite like vibrant and loud, um, lots going on. If you've got a funeral next door, <laughs> you're right in it. <laughs> Um, it's quite creative and all. I feel like all the good restaurants and all the good places are in Osu. Like, yeah, I really like Osu. Yeah. But it might not be for everyone. Like, I feel like yeah. some people would maybe prefer somewhere further out or maybe the airport residential area where it's a bit more, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. yeah. It depends what kind of traveller you are. And, yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, I love living in a local because originally the whole reason was because I love being part of a creative community, I love finding other creatives. Um, that was the reason why I wanted to stay here because I wanted to see the concept store anyways. I knew you're gonna start the exhibition soon, so I just wanted to be part of it. Part of it. Um, then living with other people is always interesting. So the, the first week, obviously, we had a different, like a couple, and I was like hoping for them to leave soon. <laughs> Um, it just wasn't, yeah. It was gel. <laughs> <laughs> so different. But then um, when Salome moved in and the other girl, um, um, Estelle. Estelle. Um, it was really nice because it felt like it's just like a girl's like like house now <laughs> and we're like all roomies. <laughs> that was really sweet and like, we, like Salome would just come over here and just sit on my bed and like eat or whatever and then the other girl would come over here and ask me like, oh, do you think my dress looks nice? And stuff like that. <laughs> just the vibe that you get when you live with other girls. Um, that was quite nice. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. And Salome and I are friends now so and we hang out. So See, you yeah, always meet each other outside of Ghana and now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really cool. That's amazing. Um, quite a few, but um, one of them would be to trust your own voice, like trust your own guts and your intuition. Um, because I had, for example, a lot of people tell me what I should be doing and what I should not be doing and what could be the right path, and especially like my parents and stuff like that. 
Um, and a lot of people, even people that love you, think they might know which way you should go and things that may be unsafe or things like that. Um, and they not often worry about you, but if you know something is right and if you know you just have that feeling in your heart, I think you should just follow it. Um, and no one else can really decode that for you. No one else can tell you what that is in your heart that you're feeling. You know what I mean? If that is real or not, whatever, you know what I mean? You just have to follow it, especially if you want to start something new. No one else has done it before. You have to trust your, your own gut, otherwise, because no one else can tell you if it's right or wrong. Um, yeah, just trust your own voice. Yeah. And I'm glad that I, yeah. I'm sure. I brought my, I, I, yeah, I'm here because of me, so yeah. You brought yourself to life. Quite proud of myself yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. You're now working on your own two feet. Yeah, um, I figured it out. Freelance, yeah. doing your, your own, um, carving your own way, literally. Yeah. Um, so and yeah. by the grace of God, obviously. But yeah, me and God. Oh, wow. Collaboration. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, would you like to say anything, um, just like as a, general comments or something you think is important that we know about you? Mm. No? no? <laughs> is there anything you want 